All right, guys, video two. <clears throat> So, the first video that I just did, I'm uploading it right now. It is a it is talking about do you believe scripture is true? And I'm going to be kind of on a theme for the next couple of videos. Um, this one's going to be about lawlessness because a lot of people are misusing what this is. There's a lot of those people that are on the other side that are coming against the grace preachers that are saying, "Oh well, you know, you're children of lawlessness because you guys are going to get left behind. You're all going to be the goats and everything." Are you sure? Because I'm pretty sure the 200 scriptures that I share about grace through faith trump your three or four scriptures about faith with works. And you're not understanding exactly what that's talking about. If you want to work your way into heaven, go ahead. You heard the warning here. You heard the warning on Tim's channel, Greg's channel, uh, Katie did, Lily Girl, Diana M, Haynes Ministries, Ty Green. No, not so much Ty Green, but yeah. Um, Barry Scarborough, Chad Washman, Wall 88, Amir Sarfati. Jan Markell, I can keep going. I need to make a list of all the people. Tons of people. If I forgot your name, I'm sorry. These people are sounding the alarm. They're letting you know this is what the scripture says. It is extremely clear. Your interpretation of it is not clear because now you're having to twist some words in order to make it work for yourselves. And that's not what it was intended to be done. So who's doing the lawlessness? We're reading it face value interpretation, presenting it that way. And it is as simple as the Bible says it is. The people that are doing the lawless stuff are the ones who are trying to add to, to grace. If Jesus and God both in the Bible say, it is by grace you have been saved through faith, it is he who believes shall have eternal life, why would you add something to that? Because you can't take the scriptures that God and Jesus said, go read something the apostles said that you misunderstand anyway, and then use that to negate what Jesus and God said. They're the authority. They're the ones that inspired all this to be written. So now you're going against what they said. You're trampling Jesus Christ. You're trampling his blood underfoot. And the Bible gives the punishment for that. You look up the scripture, you can Google it. I'm going to share some scriptures about lawlessness because it's important that we understand exactly what we're going on, what's going on here. And it doesn't have to be complicated, but people want to make it complicated because it makes them feel good about themselves. I have a special anointing and a special understanding about it. No, everybody has the anointing. 1 John 3-4, through 4, everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. Now, is this talking about the sinner or the person who says, I'm going to go have sex with that prostitute, and I know that I'm covered by the blood of Jesus Christ? Who's, who's the problem? Who's this talking about? That person is practicing lawlessness. Now, if you're stuck in a sin you're struggling trying to get out of, I say all the time, keep struggling, keep fighting. If you're not doing it because you think you're covered, if you're not doing it because you think you're good to go, you're not practicing lawlessness. You're fighting, trying to come out of that sin. Jesus will save you from this. you got to have faith in him. But people who think, oh, I'm okay to go do that. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. They're using grace as an excuse to sin. That's lawlessness. So all you people out there that are coming out against us saying, oh, you guys are Y'all have license to sin. Really? When did anybody ever say that? That preaches grace. Name one. Name one video that that was said in. Never. It never has been said in. We tell you to turn away from sin. That's what repentance is. We, I tell you to confess your sins because with sin comes a burden. You confess it to the Lord. Jesus said, if you're faithful to confess, I'm faithful to forgive. Confess it. Let me take the burden. And while you're doing that, he wads it up like a piece of paper and throws it over his shoulder never to be mentioned again. He doesn't, that's why he came and did what he did. So sin wouldn't be counted against us. So we could achieve righteousness and enter into heaven. That's why he did this. But people squash that stuff. They mash it under their foot. Sorry, I'm fired up. Because this makes me mad when people do this stuff. Not mad to sinning, but mad that you're taking something that God gave. You're taking something that Jesus paid for and gave to us and you're smashing it under your feet down into the mud like it's nothing. And it is the most important thing. And you're doing away with it. And you're denying it. And you're ignoring it. And you think we're the ones who are going to be called goats. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. No. That's y'all. Because you're denying Christ. You think he's going to go, oh, it's okay. Just come on in. No. Here's some popcorn in the soda. Go sit down. we got movies for you. No. No. That is not how it's going to go. 
What do sheep do to the shepherd? They follow him. Do you think by denying Christ you're following the shepherd? No. You're the sheep going the other way. He's going, if you're in him, he's going to come try to get you and pull you back. Get you back into the sheepfold. What did goats do? Exactly the opposite of what the sheep do. They go wherever they want to. I know because I know people that have goats. And unless they pin them in, they do whatever they want, whenever they want, regardless of what's going on. They don't follow the sheep herder. Sheep follow the sheep herder around. Go, go watch. Go find some people that have sheep and just watch them. Them sheep follow that guy everywhere he goes or the girl, whoever it is. Goats do their own thing. They don't care. The animals literally show us how, how it works. I, I can't wrap my brain around how people get this wrong, but it has, to, it has to come from a place of pride and arrogance. Oh, well, yeah, you guys don't understand what this says. No, you're twisting what it says to make it suit you because we read both read the same scripture and get two completely different understandings from it. There's a problem there. Matthew 24, 12 says, And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. I am physically seeing this happen in my personal life, not me. Because I have love for everybody. I actually have to restrain my love because the world doesn't accept that kind of stuff. I, I, I would hug everybody. I, I am affectionate towards everybody. And men or women, it doesn't matter to me. But people don't like that. This world doesn't, doesn't accept that. That's one of the reasons why I feel like I don't belong here. I'm ready to go. I, because I can't express myself in a loving manner because people don't like it. They don't, they don't feel comfortable with that. What does that tell you? Is there love in, lack of love in my heart or lack of love in their heart? But that's what we're seeing. The love of many growing cold. People that are turning away from their children. People that are denying their children. People that are casting them away because they don't want to be troubled with it. People that are killing their babies. Offering them up to Moloch and they don't even know realize that's what they're doing. People that will see somebody who is having a problem on the side of the road and won't even begin to stop and ask if they need help. Oh, they got a cell phone. They'll be good. Everybody's got a cell phone. You don't know what's going on. They might be having a heart attack. Every time I see a car on the side of the road, I look to see if they're either on the phone or I pull up next to them. Hey, it's okay. I got it. You know, somebody's coming. Okay. You never know. You never know. But see, where's the love? It, it, is it in your heart to do those things? You got to get. This is all stuff that comes from the Spirit. 2 Thessalonians 2 7 says, For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. This was almost 2,000 years ago. Only he who now restrains it will do so until he is out of the way. We are restraining lawlessness. We are the restrainer because we have the Holy Spirit in us. We have to be taken out of the way until he is out of the way in order for that lawlessness to completely unfold. Now, this is a, there's a lot of load in here because now you got to think about, wait a minute, if there's people that are practicing lawlessness, are they going to get taken to the rapture even though they claim to be a Christian? I'm telling you guys, not everybody that calls himself a Christian is really in Christ. There are entire churches that are blessing the LGBTQ. They're having parades at their church. They're out there uh, blessing and anointing abortion clinics. How can they be in Christ? They're not. Because if you're in Christ, you're not going to do that. You're not going to agree with that stuff. LGBTQ has added a new letter. It's now LGBTQP. Guess what the P stands for? Pedophile. They're fighting for pedophile rights. Okay, great. Whose kid are you going to give them? Yours? No. They want to give somebody else's kid. Guys, the days of Noah. We're in it. We've been in it. This is it. It cannot possibly go on any much further than this. If it does, we're all dead because they will come kill us because we're preaching against these things. Gay marriage is wrong. Homosexual relationships are wrong. I've been preaching against this and coming out against this stuff since 2015. That's why I got blocked from Facebook and can't have an account on Facebook no more. I almost got blocked off Twitter because of it, because I was coming out against this. I was one of the very few people that was doing it vocally and adamantly. And look what we got now. People don't want to talk. Oh, that's a touchy subject. And no, it's not. I don't hate anybody who is a homosexual. I love the person. I hate the act that they're doing because it's unnatural. It is not natural. And I used to tell people like this all the time. If there's not procreation involved, it is an unnatural act. It is not. You're not born that way. It's a sexual preference. Don't like it? Sorry, but that's the truth. 
God did not create you to be that way. It is a sexual preference. That's why you have people that go gay, come back, go gay, come back, go gay, come back. I know people that do this. And I'm like, would you pick a side? You can't play both teams. But they do. Flavor of the month. Truth is the truth. Get mad? Fine. Get mad. But it, the, none of that is going to make any difference when you're standing before God. He goes, why did you listen to that guy that was telling you all that stuff? I sent him out there to do that. And all y'all got mad and turned away from him. And why didn't you listen? He was telling you the truth. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first, it's happening, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction. What day is he talking about? A lot of people confuse this one. That's not talking about the rapture, it's talking about the second coming. We have the, the rebellion now, big time. Guys, all of us who truly believe we're a Christ, we're a little tiny group. There, there are not many of us. I used to think it'd be millions and millions of people. I'm starting to question that. That get taken in the rapture. 2 Corinthians 6.14, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? I've told you before, I've cut off over 300 friends. Because they were not and refused to walk with God. They actually attacked me verbally. And a couple of times almost got physical attacks. One of them from as far away as Canada, uh, uh, Alaska. Because I stood up against these things. Because these things are wrong. So I've had to cut almost all the friends I have out of my life. Because they accept this stuff. They think it's okay. And it's not okay. Are you going to stand up for Christ? Are you going to stand up for God? Are you going to stand up for what the truth is? Because if you're not, how can you say you walk with him? How can you say you follow him? It, all the new people that I, I just noticed, I got more subscribers. This channel is about conviction. It's about sharing the truth, even if it hurts even if it cuts deep. It's in the Bible. If, we don't get, if I don't give you the full counsel of God, I fail as a watchman. Matthew 13, 41 says, The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers. Is he talking about the person who sins that is in Christ? No. He's talking about the people who do it because they love it. Do it because they enjoy it. Did you know there are um, homosexual pastors? Where in any part of all creation would anybody ever think that was okay? It's not. When did that ever, when did they ever ordain anybody in the past? All the way back. That was like that. Never. They in fact, back in the Old Testament times, they put them to death. What do you stand up for? Get mad all you want at what I'm saying, but it's the truth. And I will stand up for God because I'm not here to impress man. I'm here to impress him. I'm here to make him happy. And he has given me a testimony. And that testimony is, who do you stand up for? Do you stand up for him? Do you stand up for Jesus Christ, the one that died for you? Or do you stand up because you don't want to make, you know, you know, don't want to make anybody mad. You don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Uh, you know what? I'd rather hurt your feelings and you get saved than to not hurt your feelings and you fall into destruction and go to hell because I'll carry that guilt through all eternity. I'm not going to do that. I will share the truth and if it hurts somebody, it hurts somebody. It is what it is. But I know my conscience is clear when I stand before him because I'll tell him, I gave you I gave the word you gave me. I called them out. I, I sounded the alarm. I put it out there and I was denied. And he'll go, I know. I saw it. You shared the truth. That's what I'm hoping I'm going to hear. Matthew 7, 23. And then I, will I declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Who's, who's lawlessness? It's not the sinner, because you can't be sinless. The apostles even said you can't be sinless. It's the one who loves sin. It's the one who enjoys sin. It's the one who claims to be saved, but then goes right back out and parties and gambles, eats too much, doesn't go to church, does nothing involving God. Didn't even entertain that thought. Oh, I'm a Christian. You sure don't look like you're leading a life of a Christian. Should have been some kind of changes in there. Should have been some kind of works going along with your faith. Faith plus works. Those works are works of the Spirit. The changes that happen in you when the Holy Spirit comes in you. Titus 2.14 Who gave himself 
for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. What is he talking about here? Did it say who gave himself for us to keep us from lawlessness? No, to redeem us from it. There's a very specific difference between the person who says they're in Christ and the person who is in Christ. Not only is it the lifestyle that these two people lead and the way they conduct themselves, but it's also because these people, even though they still sin, are saved and redeemed. These people are not. And I'm telling you, as I'm sitting here, go look up the statistics yourself, because 10%, the average church, 10% of the congregation truly believes and follows Jesus Christ, and the other 90% does not, yet they're in that church every day, and they look down on all those 10%. Go look it up. It's facts. I'm not giving you anything that's not accurate. Romans 6, 19. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. Can we be sinless? No, but we can sure try and keep going down that path. If you show him you're making an effort, he will lead you from those things. He will cleanse your life. You may lead a fairly lonely life. You may be alone in a group of people, but you're saved and you have salvation and your position in heaven will be higher because of it. I can't share all scripture in one video. The video will be nine hours long. I can't put this all together and make one message out of it. It has to be multiple messages. But it's impossible to get this point across. It's impossible to, to share a simple understanding because people don't listen to listen to the message and then go prove it. They listen to find something you said that they think is wrong, and then they're going to take that and try to use it against you. Go, oh, no, 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 you were wrong about that. Really? So you missed all the other ones, but the only thing you got was that one word that you think I was wrong on. And that's what people do, and it's it's unfortunate. It sucks because you can't ever have a conversation with somebody. Not, not a conversation that's going to go anywhere. Matthew 23, 28. So you also outwardly appear righteous to others, but within you are full of hip hypocrisy and lawlessness. That's the whole other side. They call all of us the problem people? Really? Pretty sure. Y'all are the ones that are doing exactly what the Bible says we shouldn't be doing, especially in the fact that you're hating on your brothers and sisters, using the word of God as a weapon against them when the Bible says not to do that. Oh, but, but, but we're, we're, supposed, we're not supposed to judge the outsider. We're supposed to judge all of us. You're supposed to judge but not hate in that judgment. You judge to help them. You don't judge them to curse them. And that's what we get. I love y'all's comments. Oh, all blessings and, and all peace and all God, I don't say this to be mean or anything. And then by the end of your comment, you've cursed me or thrown a couple of cursings at me. Why'd you give me a blessing if you're just going to curse me on to, behind it? I don't, I don't accept your blessing. Keep your blessing to yourself because you're going to need it. I don't need it. I have a blessing that serves me more than anyone else's blessing does. And that's the one from him. He gave me this. Because without him, I wouldn't have this right now. So I'm going to end that one there. I'm trying to keep these fairly short. I'm going to try to blast through some scripture here. Guys, we are in an extremely dangerous time right now. I am personally witnessing. a lot. Most of y'all are in, in the world and in lives and doing your things and everything. I'm without that. I've separated myself from that. I spend most of my days at home. I stay away from people. And I've, it's always been this way, but it's especially now. And there's all kinds of other issues behind that. But I have a very unique position in that what I'm watching going on, what I'm seeing going on, because I'm watching videos in the comment sections, looking at news, looking at what's going on around the world, reading all kinds of articles and stuff. And what I'm seeing is, is I'm seeing a ramping up of this stuff really fast. Why? It's because we're close. All that information I shared you guys, guys about the end of September and October, the closer we get, the more, and the more I see changing, how fast it's changing, the more I think this is it. We're out of here. But who's ready? Jesus is coming for the overcomer. Jesus is coming for the overcomer. Who's the overcomer? I've done a video on this too. The overcomer is a person who believes, who truly believes, who puts their full faith and trust in Jesus Christ for these things. 
Not the person who's sinless, because you can't be sinless. Tell me how your naughty dream about your neighbor, and you're still sinless because you didn't act on it. Because Jesus said if you did it by thought, it's still a sin. The same with hating. If you've hate, you've committed murder. It's still a sin. And it's thought. Your dreams are made from your thoughts. So how can you be sinless? You can't. And these people that think they are, they're just so deceiving themselves. And the scriptures even say, I can't remember where it's at. I'm terrible at remembering that stuff. But there's scriptures in there that, that say, if we say we're without sin, we deceive ourselves. This was the apostles that were saying this. So if they said it and they admitted they were struggling with sin, how can we think we can achieve something that even the apostles, those chosen and walked with Christ, said they couldn't do? And none of the Jews under the law could do it. None of them were sinless. None of them fulfilled the law. Some got good, but none of them could do it. It's not rocket science. It's simple face value interpretation of the word. Read it for what it says and apply it to life. That's it. And you will come out on top every single time. I love you guys. I bless you all in Jesus' name. I pray God gives you revelation about this. I pray he convicts your hearts about this, not to condemnation, but to righteousness. I pray that he opens your, up your understanding to see these things. Now, those of y'all who got it, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to all the other people out there who are struggling with this stuff that think they're good and they're not good. I'm not admitting that I'm good, but I have this simple open revelation about this stuff. And that's what I've been given to share. And the, the further along we go, the more stronger I believe that. I questioned the last seven months on and off, had doubts. Am I really, should, should I really be doing this? I, now, I know now more than ever that Yes, I should be doing this. I was called to do this. He kept me for this. Just like all the rest of y'all who are right on track. You were chosen to do that. That's why I encourage everybody. You got the feeling and the, and the urge to do videos. Do videos. Share scripture. Start somewhere. But share the gospel. We don't have a lot of time left. And if we can lead at least one person, then you're taking that person to heaven with you. That's good. I love you guys. Sorry if I seem rather fired up, but one of them days. Anyway, I'm really getting, I'm really getting upset, not upset, angry or, or fired up, but upset, saddened because I see what's going on. And it's so unfortunate that we're going that way. Don't get caught in that trap. Don't let Satan deceive you. Don't let him suck you in to getting hung up in all these goofy things that these people want to come up with. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video.